Um, I've actually been building energy efficient homes for 25 years and um, I'm actually working with the builder as a consultant to actually uh, bring this out to the marketplace so that homeowners have a choice to buy this. Tell me a little bit about um, why someone might want to invest their own money in a home that uses 50% less energy than a, a normal home. Uh, the house virtually pays for itself right from the first day. All the energy saving features in here save money that can be applied to mortgage payments. So the operating cost of this house is a lot lower. Tell me how this might be the sort of the wave of the future. I mean, what's what's sort of your your intention in terms of inspiring other builders and homeowners to, to go this route? We've actually um, we've put out a challenge to other builders to build at least one house to a 50% reduction in total energy use. And again, it's sort of a, a marketing 101 thing. The market hasn't been offering this product to people, and I think as we start offering it, um, we're gonna sell it. So if we sell it, people will buy. What, what's the difference about this house from the outside? Do you remember you gave us a little bit of slack on? Side yard setbacks. Setbacks, good one. So what happens on uh, an orientation like this, if we can actually make the house a little bit wider, we can get more windows on the front of it. So the other feature of this house from the outside, it, it basically looks like a normal house, um, except for the fact that it has big overhangs. So these three foot overhangs actually allow us to collect the, winter, the, the, the sunlight in the winter when we want it and actually reject it in the summer when we don't so we can reduce our air conditioning loads. The other thing the people standing further back are gonna notice on the front of this uh, model here, there's two solar thermal air panels. So when the sun is shining in the winter, they can collect almost 30% of the heat load for the house, okay? Um, on the side, on this west side, we actually have solar thermal water panels that are gonna annually supply about 60% of the hot water load to the house. Okay, so um, basically like Peter was saying, I think the trick is is that the, the architect, where's the architect here? Come on, yeah, Vincent, yeah. Um, it's a very attractive house, right everybody? Yeah, okay, and it looks like a conventional house and I think that's the trick, that it, it, it doesn't radically look like some of those first generation solar homes we saw in the early, the early 70s. Uh, anything else out here, Vincent? Other than the building system, the building envelope. So the, the, the stucco is actually a breathable membrane on the outside and it allows us to put more insulation on the outside of the, uh, the wood frame. So the walls in this house are almost R30, okay? So Minky's built Energy Star houses down there. Where's Paul Duffy? R20 down there? R20 okay. in the walls, full height basement insulation down there. Um, so th those are the typical upgrades to go to Energy Star, along with some mechanical changes. Ventilation system is standard in those houses, along with an upgraded heating system. So again, this sort of represents the next level of house that uh, the homeowner could get. The windows are actually low E squared windows, which have two tinted coatings. The windows down there would be about an R3. These ones are about an R4. Basically, window treatments um, the, the, the are one of the key areas of improvement in the building envelope over the last 20 years. Um, effectively, the early generation energy efficient houses, we went for multiple layers of glazing and we ended up right. with window frames that were very, very heavy and unmanageable for the purchaser. So they, there was this image of, of clumsy, awkward energy efficiency. What we're finding now is with the new higher technology windows, it's providing a lot more flexibility in terms of design. And it, it, as John said in, on other aspects of the house, it doesn't look that much different, but it just performs that much better. So in, in layman's terms, those double glazed windows up there actually outperform a triple glazed window. Correct. Okay. So I don't know how we're going to get everybody inside. Uh, I've actually been told the radiant floor has been running all night. So it's toasty down there, so you're gonna get the point. Um, the other thing that's very important about building these homes is we can actually build in um, things for lower energy reduction, like solar ready. These houses actually have all the panels on the outside. 
but we can make houses solar ready so that we can run all those systems at a later date. Um, the other thing that we have that's sort of unique to this house is the basement floor has under slab insulation and there's mass in there that we can actually use if we needed to to, your, to store solar thermal later on. So the whole trick is not actually adding the feature now but making sure we can build it in later. And, and really we've got to think about when any house is new house is built, we're losing the opportunity to do that, to build the future into it. Yep. If we don't plan with these, some of these features in mind, uh, we end up in the situation that's not unlike the automobile version of a, of a Suburban. <laughs> when, the pri when the price goes up for, for, uh, for heating fuel, um, you're going to be stuck with a house that consumes a lot and you don't have really that much flexibility in terms of making improvements. So the notion is to try and design features in that deliver uh, something above and beyond code but give you the flexibility going forward to make improvements over that. So uh, the stucco in this particular model and the insulation system that we used, it's whole house foam. So all the wall cavities have half pound, uh, lower density, water-based spray and foam. And the result of that is actually this home is one air change. So when that 40 mile an hour wind is blowing on the house in the winter, it'll only be giving up its heat once or twice a day. So this house here is actually three times tighter, two and a half times tighter than the, the houses over there. And the neat thing about the particular type of foam that's in this, this house is let's say energy prices did go haywire. Let's say, for sake of discussion, energy prices went 10 times higher. Well, that foam, because it's a breathable foam, will not encapsulate the moisture in the wall. We can add additional layers of insulation in board of that foam by removing the drywall, strapping inside in the interior of the house. We have the flexibility going forward of making improvements at relatively modest cost. We don't necessarily have to go and reclad the exterior as is required for many, many homes that are built today. Okay, so what it, what it boils down to, no pun intended, because we got a boiler in there, but uh, this house actually heats for about $1,800 less a year at 50 cents a cubic meter of gas. The thing we really have to think about is not the cost of energy, but to think about our available energy as a six pack of beer. And we've already drank three of those beers. So it doesn't actually matter what the beer costs, we better drink it slower or it's going to run out. <laughs>